High above the tumultuous theater of earthly concerns, I resided in my specially furnished tin can, more officially known as the International Space Station. The cold, vast expanse of space offered an ever-present backdrop to my world, where the ethereal dance of celestial bodies and endless mystery of the universe often left me contemplating life's deepest questions. The ISS was a remarkable place, the pinnacle of human achievement and resilience. Yet in the end, it was still just a tin can, orbiting the planet at 28,000 kilometers per hour. I wasn't alone in this metallic sanctuary. Sharing this hunk of engineered metal was my comrade in arms, a bear of a man named Ivan. Ivan was a cosmonaut hailing from Russia, and over the past four months, we'd become more than colleagues or compatriots of our respective nations. We had shared a home in the middle of the cosmos, weathered the psychological storms that came with isolation and partook in scientific explorations that would have had the likes of Newton and Galileo green with envy. For all intents and purposes, Ivan was my brother in the star-strewn ocean of our infinity. Our camaraderie was tested when word reached us that our respective homes had decided to play a lethal game. They'd begun lobbing nuclear fireballs at each other like scorned children tossing sand in a playground. Quite the party, I'm sure, but one that offered a disastrous checkmate for our species. Normally, only one of us could be on a spacewalk at a time, but it just so happened that we were replacing a section of the station's solar array, and it was a two-man job. We were outside the station as news filtered through the static of our communication devices. We received our respective final orders. The harsh metallic voice, devoid of any emotion, echoed in the confines of my helmet. Terminate, Ivan. It was cold. It was distant. It was straight from a dystopian novel. The bond we had formed was suddenly frayed, severed by the hands of faceless bureaucrats thousands of kilometers away. I just had to be sure of what I heard. Houston, did you say terminate Ivan? Terminate Ivan. This will be our final communication. I couldn't help but crack a grim smile at the absurdity. Here I was, an astronaut from the land of the free and home of the brave, tasked with exterminating my space buddy. As I stared at Ivan, the gravity of our predicament started to sink in. Here, in the isolated expanse of space, we were to engage in a game of survival that mirrored the violence being enacted on Earth. Barely suppressing a snort, I looked at my reflection in the window, the earth shimmering behind me. I was wearing a spacesuit with a casual standard issue NASA polo shirt underneath, not exactly the attire of a seasoned assassin. Well, at least I can have a chuckle, even in the face of apocalypse. The earth, once a vibrant sphere of blue and green, was slowly turning into a sickly canvas of smoke and fire. We were adrift, abandoned by our homes, each other's potential executioner, but I didn't sign up to play Space Gladiator. I was here to answer the call of the cosmos, not to carry out death sentences. It was a surreal paradox, to view the escalating hostility from afar. The senseless violence painted across the serene canvas of space was a cruel irony that resonated with every heartbeat. With the ominous order still echoing in my ears, I turned my gaze back to Ivan. The man was a veritable giant, with hands that could easily crush a melon, yet he'd been my teammate, my lifeline in this vast and different cosmos. We had worked side by side, laughed at our language barriers, marveled at the views of our shared home planet, and even mourned the deaths of lab mice in our experiments together. I was more than aware that Ivan was no slouch either. A product of Russia's rigorous space training, he was as sharp as the tungsten carbide tools that filled our station's toolbox. His eyes, as steely as the Siberian winter, were locked onto mine. A mixture of deep-seated confusion and despair etched across his face. I decided to address the absurdity of all this directly. Did you get the same order, Ivan? I asked, striving to inject casualness into my tone. I was no actor, but I had a knack for hiding my emotions when the chips were down. 
A flicker of sadness momentarily crossed his hardened features, before his steely mask fell back into place. Da, John. Same. Came his reply. His usually strong voice a quiet murmur. For a moment, we hovered in silence, the breath in our suits our only companion. It was strange. We were astronauts, scientists, explorers of the great unknown. We were not soldiers. So, stalemate? I queried, the word hanging between us, heavy with its implications. We were orbiting the Earth at breakneck speeds, yet it felt like time had slowed to a crawl. For now, Ivan acknowledged, nodding curtly as he propelled himself toward the control panels. His massive form drifted away from me, the tension in his shoulders betraying the calm facade he was trying to uphold. This wasn't just a situation of space etiquette gone wrong. This was a life or death game, a dreadful echo of the violence that was tearing our home planet apart. It was chess in zero gravity, where each move could determine our survival. And in this strange space-bound standoff, the opening move had just been made. Ivan radioed me to go back inside and I agreed. We had enough on our plates without having to deal with the complexities of being outside on top of everything. I let him go in first. We both watched each other carefully, but maintained an air of cooperation. As Ivan set about tinkering with the control panels, I began to weigh my options. We were both too seasoned, too hardened by our rigorous training to let this descend into some slapdash space brawl. We had to think, to plan, to navigate this terrifyingly bizarre landscape with caution and intellect. It was time to play the game, only the stakes were far higher than any friendly match of chess back on Earth. In the wake of our terse exchange, an uncomfortable stillness took hold of the station. An invisible, electrified boundary seemed to separate us. The harmony that once filled the compact, cluttered space of our high-tech tin can was now replaced, with a tension so thick that you could slice it with a knife, if only we had such culinary luxuries in zero-g. Trying to carry on as usual was like attempting to ignore a tiger in the room. If the room was a metal cylinder hurtling through space and the tiger wanted to kill you, but also kinda needed you alive because he didn't want to be alone. It was awkward and chilling. Every sidelong glance became a loaded gesture. Every movement a potential threat. The familiar had transformed into the grotesque. Every hum and whir of machinery now a haunting reminder of our situation. The stalemate stretched into hours and then into days. I was tired. The concept of closing my eyes with a potential assassin floating a few feet away was ludicrous. Ivan was enduring the same restless existence. His once bright eyes now reflected the same weariness that I'm sure was mirrored in mine. The recycled air of the ISS seemed colder. The artificial lights harsher. The ghosts of our conversations echoed in the silence. The remnants of shared laughter turned into cynical specters. As we continued our perpetual match of wills, Earth continued to burn beneath us. The once beautiful panorama of our home planet was becoming a chilling portrait of apocalyptic horror. The lights that once glittered from the continents were replaced by the ominous glow of fires. The green and blue hues shrouded by a veil of ash and smoke. The vast emptiness outside seemed to resonate with the isolation we felt within the station. The incessant waiting, the relentless anticipation of a strike became an exhausting mental marathon. The longer the waiting game drew out, the more I realized this wasn't just a twisted form of space chess. It was a psychological standoff. A silent war waged not with weapons but with the ticking time bomb of suspense and dread. It was a Hitchcock film come to life, only there were no end credits to look forward to. Just the terrifying promise of an unknown ending. I was staring out of the thick window gazing upon the smoky visage of our once vibrant planet when it happened. A sharp, intense burst of pain exploded in my abdomen, ripping me away from the contemplation of our planetary funeral pyre. I looked down to see a shiv of sharpened metal, an impromptu weapon that had once been part of our onboard tools, 
jutting out from my gut. The pain was unexpected and blinding, a red-hot star of agony exploding within me. Ivan, my space brother, my fellow explorer, my cohabitant in this tin can of sanity amidst the cosmic void, had made the first move. It wasn't a pawn being moved on a chessboard. It was a full-on, no-holds-barred attack. I met his gaze, finding regret rather than victory reflected in his deep-set eyes. The Ivan I knew, the man who laughed at my terrible Russian jokes, who shared my awe of the cosmos, looked back at me. But now he was a shell of his former self, haunted and taken aback by his own ruthlessness. Through the waves of pain that threatened to pull me under, I could see Ivan wrestling with the monstrous act he had just committed. If we were all that was left of humanity, then it was already gone. As the pain became an unwelcome tenant in my gut, I grappled with the grim reality. My mind whirled, thoughts colliding with the relentless rhythm of my pounding heart. This wasn't supposed to be my reality. I was an astronaut, a space traveler, a curious mind probing the frontiers of the cosmos. I wasn't meant to be a pawn in a goddamn game of survival, floating in the zero-g environment of the ISS my lifeblood attempting to escape the confines of my body. The sight of my blood globules, the circular red droplets suspended in the microgravity, added a surreal touch to the horrific scenario. My will to live and my training kicked in then, a whirlwind of protocols and emergency procedures designed for situations never imagined by the architects of the space program. The sterile reality of the space station became a crime scene. With adrenaline fueling every cell, I propelled myself away from Ivan, the searing pain in my gut a fierce reminder of my will to survive. Amidst the clinical sterility of the ISS, I moved quickly to find refuge from Ivan, navigating the tight confines of our orbiting home with the desperation of a cornered animal. Every pulse of agony was a ticking clock, counting down the precious seconds I had left. Ivan followed guilt now absent from his eyes. We were beyond the realm of remorse, locked in a savage dance of survival. Our roles were clear, etched in the grotesque ballet of our actions, the predator and the prey. Pain, however, can be a potent teacher. It lends clarity, sharpens focus, and in my case, sparked an idea that could just tip the scales back in my favor. In a mad scramble, I managed to secure myself in the small medical bay of the ISS and wedged the door closed. The sight of medical supplies granted me a fleeting sense of relief. The station was not designed as a battlefield, and the equipment on board wasn't meant for treating combat injuries, but it was all I had. Ivan turned into a methodical fucking serial killer. When he knew he couldn't make his way in, he hovered patiently for me outside with cold, calculating eyes as I tried to stitch up my own wound. My hands were shaking from the cocktail of pain and shock. In the eerie silence, the only sounds were my labored breathing and the quiet whir of the machinery, an unsettling soundtrack to our messed up situation. My makeshift surgery was far from perfect, however the med kit came equipped with a potent clotting agent and local anesthetics that offered some temporary relief. The pain subsided into a dull throb. With my wound tended to, I turned my attention to my next pressing concern, Ivan. An idea was beginning to take form in my mind. The space station was packed with sophisticated machinery, most of which could be turned into traps or weapons with a little creative engineering. I gingerly touched the gauze patch over my wound and glanced around the station for inspiration. My gaze settled on an automated robot arm, a 3D printer in the corner and various wires and metal fixtures strewn about. I had a plan coming together. If I could figure out how to repurpose this equipment, I might just have a chance to take down Ivan. I wasn't a killer, but the instinct to survive was starting to rewrite my playbook. The specter of Ivan lingered at the threshold of the medical bay, his predatory gaze colder than the vacuum of space outside. He was a malignant shadow looming in the sterile light, a nightmarish inversion of the man I once knew. My attention, previously consumed by my gnawing pain, turned toward survival. No, 
not survival, domination. It was not enough to outlast Ivan. I had to break him. The med kit, once a humble source of relief, transformed into an arsenal in my hands. The local anesthetics could be a blinding agent if directed right, while the metallic implements, their sharp edges gleaming ominously under the stark light, promised a more visceral means of defense. I can do better than that, I thought. I did another scan of my surroundings. The automated robot arm, the workhorse of the ISS, became a weapon of force. The hot end of the 3D printer, typically used for crafting small parts and tools, had the potential to inflict searing agony. I covered up the window to the section Ivan was in and set to work. I refashioned the hot end from the printer into an improvised torch, capable of melting through plastic, metal, and flesh alike. The robotic arm was my guardian, a metallic sentinel poised to strike with an unyielding force. Anesthetic from the medkit became my blinding mist, ready to turn Ivan's world into a blinding fog. As the transformation took root, the scholar inside me was silenced, his voice drowned out by the relentless drum of survival. No longer was I an astronaut, an explorer of the stars. I was a hunter, a gladiator, ready for the killing blow. And I was ready. The stage was set, the props in place, and the actor prepared for his gruesome performance. I gripped the makeshift torch, its menacing hum filling the air with an undercurrent of threat. The hot end of the 3D printer, now stripped of its benign function, held a different kind of promise. One of intense burning pain, the robotic arm loomed, programmed to strike at my signal, while the canister of local anesthetic fashioned into an impromptu blinding device hung at my side. I removed the wedge from the door, and I could hear Ivan off in the distance approach like a rabid animal. I could feel his footsteps reverberate through the steel of the station. As Ivan approached, the silence of the bay amplified. I could see his menacing figure darken the entrance. Just as his head breached the entrance, I hurled the canister at him. It hissed through the microgravity and exploded in a bright mist as it struck Ivan. He recoiled as the chemicals stung his eyes, the harsh glare of pain tearing through his stoic facade. In that moment of disorientation, I activated the robotic arm. It lunged with a brutal force that belied its usual precision, and Ivan was thrown against the bay's walls. The metallic clang of his impact echoed through the station. Before he could regain his bearings, I ignited the torch. The hot end, glowing with a searing intensity far beyond what it was designed to do, cut through the chilled silence of the ISS. I lunged at Ivan, the burning weapon held high his agonized shrieks filling the cold metal belly of our orbital prison. The smell of burning flesh pervaded the confined space. I could feel the weapon penetrating his abdomen like it was butter. Ivan writhed in his final moments, his body convulsing in the grip of indescribable pain. His once calculated eyes were now clouded with agony, the predator reduced to prey. As the light faded from his eyes, so did the hum of the torch. Ivan floated lifelessly. My breath hitched as I stared at the lifeless form of the man who had been my friend, my partner, my fellow explorer of the stars. I had survived, but at what cost? I made my way to the control panels, my reflection in the screens a grim visage of the havoc we had unleashed. Bloodied and battered, I reached out to the radio my fingers hovering over the controls. I had to report back. I had to tell them what we had done, what they had forced us to do. But as I connected to the frequency, I heard it. The chilling silence of static. A vast, unending sea of emptiness. The war on Earth had reached its inevitable conclusion. There was no one to report to. No one to share our grim tale. Our home. Our blue-green haven was a nuclear winter wasteland. The realization that I was alone crashed into me, a tidal wave of despair and hopelessness. We had brought the war with us into space, a haunting echo of our strife on Earth, and as we fought our battle, Earth had lost hers. In a cruel twist of fate, we had become the last remnants of humanity, two cosmonauts turned soldiers. 
our tragic tale the final testament of the human race. I was alone, surrounded by the infinite expanse of space, the specter of my actions my only companion. The image of Earth, once vibrant with life, now a barren sphere, stared back at me from the control deck window. The burning pyres had been replaced by the cold, desolate colors of nuclear winter. Ivan's lifeless form hovered nearby, a grotesque monument to our downfall. In our quest for survival, we had annihilated each other. Mankind had taken its wars to the stars, only to become ghosts of the cosmos. The tragic legacy of a species that had mastered the art of destruction, but failed to learn the lessons of peace. As the horror of my predicament sank in, I found myself floating in a tomb of steel and silicone. The last human alive, orbiting the graveyard of humanity. Our game of chess had ended, not with a victory, but with a universal checkmate.